around this point, when it started to get really high, our daughter said, my, my martial arts stuff is in the car. My, my martial bag. arts stuff. And I said, and my iPad was in the car. Yeah, you said my iPad. And I said, oh, and I, that was the moment where I went, the cars. I never gave it a thought, but I wasn't even thinking about the water rising up. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I just didn't. So I waited out in the water. That video got, I don't know, two, three million views on our site. As I waded through the water, remember opening the door and, yeah, the, water, and the, water gushed the water gushed in, in from the garage. Yeah. And I realized we were in trouble. Yeah. At that moment, I was waiting and I didn't realize what I was waiting through. Like that right. nasty crap water. I didn't know what I, I was. I like, was a little nervous with you being in it just from an electrical reason. And, and everything had fallen over the. Welcome back to the Fearless Future Podcast Special Hurricane Edition. My name is Glenn Schwarm. And I'm Amber Schwarm. And it is good to be back. It is good to be back. Last month has been like chaos. We have had four weeks of absolute hell. Oh my goodness. It, oh. It, it's hard to even describe to people, you know, like, like I've lived places and, you know, you hear about disasters happening here and there and whatever. And you, if you can't relate to it, if you've never like been through it, you know, you can have like kind of compassion for people that are going through it. But living through it is something entirely different. It, when it's off the news, nobody cares anymore. Like no. it's, I shouldn't say nobody. A lot of people don't care because it's not in their face anymore. Right. And so and to me too, I've seen plenty of tragedies I've watched in the news and then you forget about it. But when you're living in it, it continues. The well, realness just can, the, just can, the devastation, the, it all just continues on. Yeah. And the, the stress level that we went through was unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life. Let's take our listeners through a little journey on what happened to us. So we are, we are transplants from upstate New York, which the worst thing we ever had was snowstorms. And then one time we had a tropical storm, ironically, that hit in upstate New York. Yep. And, and I'm originally from Texas and, you know, right. we had plenty of severe weather in DFW. You know, we, there were thunderstorms and <clears throat> tornadoes and I, I drove right behind a tornado one time. So I, I've experienced severe weather before and that was no comparison to what we just went through. I want to take you through the journey of where we, what we went through with all this. But I have to tell you that one of the strange things that's happened to me is that, you know, you always said, I want to live everybody else vacations. Yes. And we do. But right now, it still looks like a war zone. It does. Right? Everything is shut down. It's still, everything doesn't look great. And all of a sudden, this paradise doesn't feel like paradise anymore because all of a sudden, like we talked about, I actually feel vulnerable for the first time ever living someplace that I could lose everything in a moment. Yeah. Like a tornado could hit or a hurricane, hurricane could hit, which a hurricane, you know, it's coming. Well, you don't know exactly the, the depth of it or the, the you, severity of it. You have time to evacuate, it. though. You do, which we did not for the first one. No. And then we did for the second one. Well, let's, right. let's talk about that. But I think that I just want people to know that we definitely have a different outlook on where we live now because it's like, man, we could, we could build this beautiful home, which insurance is ridiculous. We could have a whole episode on how bad insurance is down yeah. here. We don't even have enough to cover our home because it's so incredibly expensive down here. And, you know, you could, we, we were having conversations about losing everything, which we yeah. should get to. But let's start with how, how this all started. Yeah. So, you know, they said, Helena's coming, but it was, it was a hundred miles off of our coast right. and it was going it, like, we were not where the eye was headed. It was, it was going to uh, the panhandle in Florida. Yeah. So they did issue an evacuation notice, but I, like, I even went across the street and talked to Holly, our neighbor, and, and we're like, what in the world are they evacuating us for? It's not even coming our right. direction. Like, and I don't think anybody on our street evacuated. Like, I, like, I don't think hardly anybody evacuated, period. No, in, in our whole area. Right. People we, online were going, oh, you're such a jerk. You didn't. By the way, love all the haters online. Yeah. What a bunch of idiots you guys are. Oh, my God. But anyways, that's but, whatever. Again, you never know they, what it's like. They're so nasty to us online. But you never know what it's like to be in the other person's shoes. You so, know. so they they think, oh, they got an evac notice. They should have known. But like, if you live there, you're like. You get evac notice all the time. It, I mean, for, for hurricanes. It's, it's pretty common. Yeah. So. You know, that we got the evac notice. We decided not to go because it wasn't coming our direction again. Right. It wasn't even close to us. Thought nothing of it. Thought nothing of so, it. So we should also tell people that we live in an area. It's in a place called Pinellas County. And there is rumor. There's a, an old urban legend. Right. That the Seminole. In, Seminole not the in, Seminole. It's a different Indian. Really? Tribe. Yes. Correct. Okay. So, there, no. so, so whatever the Indians that used to live there 100 years ago. 
they have put a blessing on this entire area because right. for a hundred years, every hurricane that came through there missed. Right. It turned at the last minute. It went a different direction and it never, ever hit for over a hundred years. Right. And so all the people would say, do you believe in the blessing? I'd say, well, I don't not believe in it because I don't want to go against that because right. I don't know because because we we lived through several hurricanes in the past few years that did the same thing. It would get close and it would turn. Right. Close and then turn. And so it was like, wow, maybe maybe there's something to that. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't know. And the funny story is, well, not so funny, but uh, a few weeks ago, there was a woman building a new house yes, in tell Pinellas that story. County. Yes. And they discovered bones from that Indian tribe. Yes. So those bones were disturbed. And yes. and apparently, you know, as the story goes, like she covered it back up and, and didn't mess with it anymore. But but somebody also said it was 100 years to the date that those was. Indians were wiped off of the of the piece of land yes. there before it was all developed. To the date. Years, to the date. Yes. Now, again, I don't have that verified to know because social media, there's a lot of garbage on social media. But when we heard that, we're all sitting around going, you got to be kidding me. So this hurricane comes in and literally the last two hurricanes I've not been here for. Ironically, I was traveling. Right. And the last one, how much water? Do, and I was gone in New yeah, York. Yeah, I stayed and, with the kids because, it, again, it wasn't coming at us. I felt safe. I wasn't, you know, what, putting our, our children's lives in danger. Um, I felt like I just abandoned my whole family. <laughs> I just left. I was but, like, my friends are like, where do you go? I go, hey, all the women and children for themselves. I got to go take care of myself. So uh, it, it was wild. <clears throat> you know, I would look out the back window and I would see the water coming up in the intercoastal. And then it would breach the seawall and it would start kind of creeping up our backyard. Then I would go look at the front windows. I would see the water start to come down our street from the Gulf of Mexico and come up our driveway into the yard. And then what happens is on the side of the house, side of the house, the waters meet. Yeah. And then they just go up. So we, should, we were we literally part of the Gulf of Mexico. We should clarify everybody that the intercoastal waterway, intercoastal water, everybody pronounced this a little bit something different, but it's spelled intercoastal waterway. Right. And that is like a giant lake that is also the same ocean water. That just filters, you know, it comes, right. it comes in through, um, passes through channels. Or channels. It, it goes in through channels. And yeah. then there's a bunch of streets that have, you know, their streets are kind of like fingers. And then there's a lot of coves yeah. and bays where, where the people live. So we live in a little cove. It's full of ocean water. So right. the dolphins in our backyard, we have manatees back there. We have all the ocean crit critters, right? right? Octopus and whatever right. else might be there. We have all that stuff. So, so during that storm, the, our, I, our garage flooded and our bedroom flooded about four inches. And I'm like, okay. During the storm that I wasn't there. Right. Let's clarify. Correct. The and storm before that, there. we flooded a couple different times. A couple but different it's times only been in the garage. Like a few inches. A few no inches. big deal. Right. No big deal. Didn't even, didn't, didn't even come touch up the our cars. steps or anything. No. no. Didn't touch the cars. They were fine. Right. So here comes Helene. And we knew we'd get a surge. You know, we, we had that kind of warning. But again... I'm basing it off of our experience that we've had in the last three years of living there. All right, sure, we'll get a little flooding in the garage, maybe in the mudroom. When I designed the mudroom, I designed it with that in mind. Like instead of instead of putting um, a base wood base down for the trim, I put tile eight inches up the wall in case it flooded, so we wouldn't have to repair anything. I'm thinking, you know, oh, I'm, I'm patting myself on the back for thinking ahead and doing. There's a little hatch door under the the kids' little um, uh, secret hideout under the stairs. I made that uh, PVC instead of wood, just in case there was flooding. Well, here comes Helene yeah. and we're looking out the window and I'm like, honey, this water's coming like way faster than it did before. Cause before it would like just kind of creep up. This water is coming in. Like, it started in the, the backyard is where we kind of started to see it first. And then it was in the front. Is we it were, breached a seawall? Yep. Yeah. So again, so just to kind of paint the picture for you, where we live, we have a seawall, a little beach, we have a dock, we have jet skis out there. We have a boat, a boat, um, lift we don't have a boat on it but we have a boat lift and we watch that water start to rise up right before that though we are we have two cats right. we have two cats and a dog and two kids and uh right before that our cats are 14 years old they're very tough and very hardy they've been they've lived in upstate new york in the woods i am sure they have battled coyotes more than once because every once in a while they'll come back with a little wound but they're outdoor indoor cats but our one cat, Zena, we love her to death, and she's amazing. She, she'll go out in these walkabouts for three days and disappear. Yeah. Well, son of a gun, the day of the storm, Didn't it starts to her. come in, and all of a sudden, we can't find her. She's not in the house. And Zeus, the boy, of course, he lays around sleeping all the time, waits for Zena to bring food in. But And our, we, daughter, our daughter, Chastity, and Zena have like a really special bond. They do. And all of a sudden, Chastity's like, where's the cat? Where's the cat? So it's storming. The wind is gusting, and I'm out in the backyard calling her, calling her, calling her, nothing can't find her 
We went and then we went down the beach, up in the neighbor's yard. And at that moment, my neighbors, the water was coming up so fast that my neighbor's beach patio, beach furniture, yeah, they're, they're out of town. Adirondack chairs. Those Adirondack, are heavy chairs. Yeah, Adirondack chairs were floating out to sea. And I, I, I went in the water and I grabbed it. I saved it for him. I said, I'm going to save that for him. And I put it up in the woods. By the way, that disappeared when the water got high. I know. We saw it floating. <laughs> yeah. So I, I pulled it up inside the in thing. And then we were all, I remember they have, they have a tiki hut, you yes. call it? Yep. And so we were, I'm up there calling the cat. All of a sudden she came out of the woodwork. We saved her life. Yeah. The truth is if, if she'd have been dead. Yeah. I mean, she's a smart cat, but where do you go in four feet of surging water yeah. every place as a cat? She doesn't know what that's all about. No. Heck, I don't know what it's all about. You know, I'm a human. I was just, it would be terrifying. And so. there were high winds. Very. At yep. that moment, there were a lot of high winds. So we, we got her, we rushed back down, we're walking through water, but we got, we got back in the house. Okay, we're all good. Now let's just chill out and watch this. And I wasn't scared. I wasn't either. Like, I, know. I never dreamed in a million years the water would get that high. No. And then, and then, so the water started rising and I go and look in the mudroom to see how I'm faring. Cause you know, we also like sealed off some places that I, that I thought water might come in. And there's water just gushing in. Yeah. And we had, we had, we have a cat door pour coming in from door. the garage yeah, and we, you know, door. we, we thought to seal it off. So we taped plastic, you know, duct tape plastic yeah, around the opening. Yeah, that did really well, didn't it? <laughs> water that, was that gushing right in like through. a waterfall. Yeah, it didn't do anything. It, it, it did nothing. And then, and then we just keep watching, watching the, the water rise higher and higher and higher. And I had just finished the mudroom the week before. Like yes, we just still even it. had to do a couple extra touches. But it had the, rope, the hardwood floors, rope banister. Yeah, I mean, it had rope stuff that stuff that absorbs that nasty water. Yeah, and let's describe it to everybody too. It's yeah. not just water; it's got no. sewage, it's got waste, it's got storms, storm debris. surge, debris, people's stuff. I mean, it's just it's yeah. un, it's hard to describe the water when yeah. it's coming in. You so. name it. Like if you can think it, it probably was in that water. I mean, well, yeah. at the day after sea we creatures, found all I mean, everything sorts else. of stuff, like bottles of gin and, yes. uh, you know, cabinets and boogie board, basically anything that was in anybody's garage and like their garage door blew open or something like yeah. it just came floating out. Came floating out. It just was everywhere with the ice box. So that was a funny story. If you've ever seen an ice box, like think about going to a convenience store or a grocery market and buying a bag of ice. They, they always say, well, go get the bag of ice. And you go outside and you open this giant freezer, which is probably seven, 800 pounds. Yeah, it's a big. giant, and you open this big door and you take a bag of ice out. Well, that was what exactly what it looked like. So, so let me show you this clip. So this ice box, that, that the picture you're looking at right now, that's our basketball hoop at 10 feet high. That is floating by in the road as we're looking out from the front. It yeah, was that, that basketball hoops in our driveway. Yes. And that, that giant, I was like, it's an ice box. What is that? And it's floating down a river, which used to be our road. That was the street. Yeah. And that, that was, you know, and even at that moment, I had this uncanny thing for me. Whenever things get really stressed, I get really calm. Yeah, I do too, actually. And so it's a good, it's a good quality to have, especially if you're a business owner like us. I think you have to, you know, try and stay calm for your kids, but for yourself, because being crazy and being nervous doesn't change anything. Because when, when that flood comes in, you're in. Yeah. I mean, you're in for the long haul. Whatever happens, you have to deal with it as it comes. Now, even though we didn't evacuate, we do take some precautions. And I'm probably the one of the you two are. of us that um, kind of my, over over prepares on stuff. My precautions are having you. You take care of all that stuff. <laughs> so so we tied the kayaks up um, as high as we possibly could in the backyard in yep. case we had to, you know, get to our neighbor's house, which is even higher than we are. We could we could try to row over there. Right. Um, I had all of our life jackets sitting on the dining room table. I had a rope there in case we needed to tie ourselves together. So no, we didn't evacuate because we didn't think it was going to yeah. be that bad, but we did take precautions just in case. Yeah. We should definitely talk about, so the, we started doing videos. The funny part was that my, the, you know, this massive new following, which all of you guys love all you guys. Thank you for all the, we had some, we had a few haters, but a ton of people giving us love and yes. support. So thank you to all you guys who gave us love and support. It was really a, a great uh, experience. The video that got millions of views that started all this was our jet skis. Yeah. Because the jet skis, we have the jet skis on a floating dock. And I was, I thought for sure, because the way that it's built with PVC pipes, that when it reached the top, it was going to pop off the PVC pipes and we would lose the jet skis. So we right. tied those to the dock. Well, Lo and behold, that was the most sturdy thing we'd ever had because they, they went up like 15 feet. They, they actually, the PVC pipes rose above a, it's a system this guy developed for us. And I didn't, 
I didn't know how great it was until we needed it. It's like one of those telescoping curtain rods that that comes out. So, sure. Yeah. It, but but hammered in the ground right. in your in your bay so that it floats up. So that's what started some of the like watching watching that go up because our our team said, Glenn, you should you should do some more organic posting. I said, Well, yeah, we have a storm coming. I'll just I'll take I'll take some of that. So going back to not being scared, as it rose. You and I, so we should describe to everybody too. Our home was built 30 years ago, 1991, One. so 33 years ago. And the home, that the code at that time was to have your main living must be at about, about nine feet. Yeah. We have, an, we have a, a foyer that you There's walk into. a foyer into. at nine and then you go up two steps. So our living area is about at 11. Right. And then that's, that's 98% of the house right. is at 11 feet above sea level. And we're at nine feet and the storm surge was going to be four to eight. They, they said it was around six, but it was high tide. Right. So on, you have to add three feet to that Correct. number. So the, the math was as we're watching it come in and I knew high tide was there. And why do all hurricanes have Seem to, come, to come, in? come at night? Why do they come at night? I don't know. I Something don't understand why they're maybe. always at night. Every hurricane is at nighttime when you can't see and it's scary That's and all been that. Our experience. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. So anywho. It, it was a lot to deal with. So as we sat there watching the water rise up into our home, I remember you and I started to move things, right? We started to move things like on a regular basis. We're like, wait a minute, we got to get, we got to get stuff. So, you know, here's a picture we'll show. This is when the water was just starting to kind of get to the cover of the driveway. Yeah. And it was like, at this point, we're like, ha ha ha, you know, it's coming in and whatever. And That's I not, never, but, but at that, so I'm like, so, I'm like, I've seen it like that before, honey. We have, don't have anything to worry about. You know, let's not worry until we have to worry. But here's the backyard. Now all of a sudden we have no backyard. Our lawn is covered. Our yeah. dock is covered. I have electro, we have, we have power down there at the dock. I start to see those outlets about to be covered. I'm like, what is, what is happening? Like what's happening? We are start, we, we've lost our backyard. So then after that though, it starts creeping up the stairs onto our like pool deck. Yes. And I'm like, then I start getting a little nervous. I'm like, okay, it didn't come this far before. And, and it was the speed at which it was coming too. That's at least three feet off the ground. Like, yes. So that three feet above the sea, not sea level, but three feet above. Just our lawn. Our lawn. Yeah. And so that, and so that was getting crazy. We were so getting here, really, yeah, really I started nervous going out taking it. video shots like this. And it was, you know, I just wanted to grab people's attention and show them, but it was, the water was going so fast. I don't even know how to describe how fast it was coming. I didn't even want you out there really, but, but the, it, it's funny, the, the shift in your thinking, you know, like. Here we are worried about jet skis, which in the overall scheme of things don't matter at all. Not a bit. You know, but <laughs> then when you start to think, you know, you start out the storm worrying about, okay, let's secure the jet skis. You know, that's the, that's the thing we have to be concerned with losing the most right, right. now. Like you're, you're not worried about losing anything. Else. It was the most then, vulnerable at the time. Right. Exactly. But then when you're, when you're thinking shifts to, wow, who cares about the jet skis? I might lose my house. Yeah. This is my where we start looking, you know, this is where the water starts coming in at a very low level in the brand new mudroom that you built. Again, this is from the garage into our home. And I want to find another video to show you because it, because later on it got so high around this point when it started to get really high, our daughter said, my, my martial arts stuff is in the car. My, my martial arts stuff. And I said, and my iPad was in the car. Yeah. You said my iPad. And I said, oh, and I, that was the moment where I went, the cars, I never gave it a thought. Yeah. I mean, literally like, okay, duh. Like I never gave it a thought from up being up North. When there was a storm, it's always protected in the garage. Right. Snowstorm, snow doesn't get in the garage, maybe some water, but I wasn't even thinking about the water rising up. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I just didn't. So I waited out in the water. That video got, I don't know, two, three million views on our site. As I waited through the water, remember opening the door and yeah, the, water, the, water gushed the water gushed in, in from the garage. Yeah. And I realized we were in trouble. Yeah. At that moment, I was waiting and I didn't realize what I was waiting through. Like that. Right. Nasty crap water. I didn't know what I, I was. Like, I was a little nervous with you being in it just from an electrical reason. And, and everything had fallen over. The, we had we had plants that have thorns in them. Those had fallen <laughs> over in the garage. My bougainvillea. Yeah. I'm walking. Here's a picture of me when I opened the garage door just to kind of show that's the, the car door. Right. That's that's your car door, yeah. your BMW. And that it's shot. And yeah. all the lights are going crazy because. It electron, my car was going crazy. My car is a little bit higher than yours. Well, my former car, we, we lost all of our cars, but that was nuts. I mean, during that moment, it was really, I started to realize this is not good. And we brought, I was able to climb in the car, even though there's water, that was a really odd experience yeah. and be able to grab those bags and, and get some things out of the cars and brought them in the house and realized it was bad. And you and I remember the kids went upstairs to their room 
And they were being... Chassie was starting to get a little nervous. And we told her, you told her, don't worry. Unless, go ahead. Remember I said, I said, I said, if you see daddy worry, then you get to worry. Okay. And she said, okay. And so I didn't worry because I wasn't worried. But I will tell you, as you and I sat in the front step or inside, so our little foyer step, two steps down. So we sat at the 11 foot level and we're watching the nine foot level of our home. So we have double doors to enter our home. We had both of those open and we were watching the water come up our front steps. And we were, it was literally, it was start, the wave was going over the first step, which means we had four or five step, inches yeah. left to go. Yes. That, and, and that was going to be, and now do you remember what happened with the piano? So we well, have an yeah. electronic piano and it was on that low, lower level. And I said, you know what? It has acrylic legs. It'll be okay. And then it dawned on me all the controls for the pedals. Right. And I said, we got to get that off. So I jumped underneath it and I said, get me an Allen wrench. And what'd you say? They're all in the garage. Underwater. All the tools are in the garage underwater. Underwater. Yeah. And we, I said, well, and then you and I lifted that you thing said, together. How strong you feeling? <laughs> yeah, how strong? We, you and I picked it up and put it up on the higher level, and we got it out of there. So that was, yeah, that was crazy. But I also were redoing our floors, and I had probably oh. four thousand dollars worth of hardwood floors sitting oh, in our foyer. It was lovely stacked there because we yeah. haven't installed them yet. Yeah, that so was fun to I move. Was, I was not well. We didn't move those until Milton, though. Oh, those we didn't? were there during Helene. So oh. I'm like, I'm like just sitting there thinking, I'm just going to eat four grand right now. Yeah. And they discontinued them. So I can't just order more from the ones on the bottom yeah. that get ruined. So well, we, we were, we were anticipating the water coming in that foyer and just praying that it didn't come yeah. two more feet higher. So we should tell everybody too. So we have a whole house generator, which is, which by the way, make that investment. If you live in an area that ever loses power, yeah. we've had that in all of our homes since we could afford them like 10 grand. It's the best investment you'll ever make in a house. So yes. it, because when your power goes out and you can keep, stay active, that's great. So some of our neighbors have them. So when the power went out about 10 o'clock, 10 or 10 o'clock, it was because the water rose up to the four foot platform in the backyard where that's, that generator's on. So it's not in the ground in Florida. You have to have it by code up on a four foot platform. The water reached it. And so when it reached, it must be some kind of a sensor and it shut it off. Yeah. So we had no power. Now in Florida, it gets hot when there's no power, especially when especially humidity was crazy right then. So we had no power. And so we sat and watched that water. One of my close friends, Jason, he, he's a big boater. He, and he, he texted me about that time. He said, how are you making out? I said, well, we're watching water come in our door. And he said, he said, look, he said, the tide's going out. He texted me and said, tide's going out. And at that moment, I literally sat with the kids and prayed and said, God, please spare our home. I mean, I'm like, this is, this is going to be nuts. And literally at that moment it happened. I'm like, wow, that was, that was quick answer. Prayer. <laughs> just me praying now or what? No. So I was looked at and said, wow, but the tide had just started going out and literally it stopped rising. Yeah, I was I was texting Danielle, my girlfriend, and she was saying the same thing. She said, I think I think the water's gone down two inches. We've been looking at a line that it's that it's yeah. up to. And we did the same thing on our back steps. Yes. We're so, like, so we went to bed not knowing. Yeah, I went and slept with the kids because this is one in the morning. And there's still a storm going on. I mean, it's yes. still high winds and you know. Oh, yeah, and the water is still and, rushing and stuff is right. going by your house in a river. You know, at one point I remember saying to you, Hey, if if something goes bad with those jet skis, I'll just swim out to it. And then I saw the icebox go by and I saw the stuff in the water. I said, and I saw the current. I said, I'm not going in that. Yeah, you get whisked out to sea. You go you get you never to be seen sea. again. Yeah, right. You'll Th- die. There were there were neighbors on with on streets that didn't even have water that had dolphins in their front yard. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. So this goes on. So so three three in the morning. Yeah, here's here's us playing with. This is right before the storm. The water was starting to rise, and this manty came up to see us yeah. right in our right in our back dock. So that was the calm before the storm. Yeah, for sure. So so I, I went and slept with the kids that night. We cracked the windows to let some air through because it was so hot and the breeze felt really nice. But we were we were sweating, and then I stayed downstairs in our bedroom on the first yep. level. I figured if water starts hitting on the floor, I'll, I want to get some sleep. About three o'clock, I wake up. Here's the crazy part. Think of all that water, the, the volume of water, four feet high, all over the neighborhood, garages, everything's torn apart. And I thought to myself, I'm going to be using the kayak for like a, a week or two to get around because there's no way to get around. Three in the morning, I wake up, gone. Yeah, Water's the water gone. had dissipated. As if, as if nothing ever happened. I mean, it's wet and moist and nasty and there's just garbage every place. And I, I remember going out. At three, three in the morning, put the ladder up and climbed up on the. Yeah, I woke up when you got up and yeah. I, I, sh- I shined the flashlight yes. out of the window for you so you could see the generator. And one, thing about, one thing about us, we are always a good team during yeah. a lot of things, especially during emergencies. We come together like there's no complaining. We, we jump, we get right and you're like. We go not, into solution mode. We do. Yeah. You were holding the flashlight. I had the ladder out there. 
I'm looking, I'm in my short, I have a shirt on. I'm like, what am I doing out here? I don't even, I don't know how this thing works. I opened up and it said, press here to reset. I go, okay, let's try this. I was like, oh, thank God we have power. So we had, we had no internet service for four weeks, but we had power. So three weeks, three or four weeks, whatever it was. Yeah. The kids were dying without internet. (laughs) So wake up this morning and, and, and it, you know, we realized quickly that we've lost all of our cars. Our cars are shot. Everything in our garage lower Well, you levels. were trying to save our cars. I didn't even bother because I knew they were shot. You were doing everything you could. You're like trying to get them out of the garage. I and pushed them, out. them down. I, I know you did. I pushed them out by myself. I put them in neutral and I pushed them out. Yep. So that was, we pushed them out of the garage. I, I was trying to, I didn't know, you know, I don't want, they were paid off. I don't want to, I, I didn't want to lose my cars. Plus I just didn't want to spend money in the car. It's a lot, you know, this, I know. this, this hurricane cost us probably $50,000. Yeah. Hurricanes, yeah. Hurricanes, right. So, yeah. so we go through that. And now, now we're cleaning up. So we wake up next morning, we're cleaning up. We, we cleaned up our yard. We, I say we cleaned up. We started trying to clean up our yard. It was a disaster. This is a picture of our neighbor's house next door. We love them. They're, they're some great people. They're wonderful neighbors. They were out of town. Out of town. And we actually brought the kids over and decided to try try to help clean up their yard. They had all Which we've done multiple times when there's been storms or hurricanes. And so we were actually over there teaching our kids how to clean up and, you know, help all that. And I think it just, it was something that we wanted to do to, to show the, our kids how to help. And our own yard needed a lot of help too. And to be good neighbors. Went yeah. across the street and helped Dave and Holly. They're another great neighbors that we had across the street. And we, uh, they the, lost the, everything. I they mean, lost they lo- everything on, on their, their first, first floor. Level. Yeah. They were living, they went upstairs and were trapped upstairs yep. in their house. Cause they're, again, their house is at, at probably four foot sea level and we're at nine. Yeah. So we were, it almost came into our house. So, I mean, there, there were stories though, that came out of this that were just unbelievable. I mean, yeah, it ripped trees out of grounds. This is, you know, there's a picture at, at a little park across the street. That's our I dog. Mean, it, it ripped the earth. There was a big pine tree, like ripped the oh. earth right out of the ground. Like yeah. it, it was, it was amazing. But um, some of the kids' school friends, like one of them had to dive underwater and go out a window and swim to their family's boat for safety. Yeah. Could you imagine taking our kids and telling them to dive under that nasty, murky, dark, dirty water to get out of the house because their house was flooding so bad? Another family that I know, um, they were all four of them. They have a husband, wife and two kids. They're all on their bed watching water. Yeah. They have things float around their, their floor. Like yeah. it, terrifying. I, I, heard, I heard other stories of um, the surfer uh, guy. Our, well, th- uh, that's not what I was thinking of right now, but we should talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I did hear of families that they're the beds, they were on their beds and the beds rose up to the, to the, to the ceiling. Yeah. And they had to finally make a decision to get out of there. Yeah. Cause if you're holding on, hoping it's going to stop. But if you're in a lower house, right. That water is just coming up and you have to make a decision for your life. Right. And it, you know, that's terrifying. Right. While we're sitting there worried about, hey, power's off of our refrigerator. We might lose some food. These people are losing their house. And, and their life. And we, our neighbors are across the street. We're watching their house fill up with water. Yeah. And they're they're trapped upstairs. Right. Watching everything that they own. You know, you do your best to put everything up high. And that's what we tried to do. Well, for we, that storm, we didn't even think to do that. No. Because no. we had no idea it was going to be Talk that Talk about high. the surfer. Then I want to move on to the next hurricane. Yeah, the sur- there was a surfer in Indian Rocks. And um, he had heard some people in like his neighborhood scream. a 50-year-old scream. dude. Yeah, yeah. He had heard some people screaming, so he got in, at his board and paddled over to the house. And and there was one woman that um, he had to dive under the water, go through a window, and she was actually pinned to the ceiling by her couch. Mm-hmm. And he, she's seventy years old. He had to convince her to then dive underwater, go out the window. And and there were, there were several stories like that. He saved yeah. like ten or fifteen people. Yeah, I mean he's like a total hometown he's hero. A, he's a hero. I don't, I wish I knew his name, but he is a hero. He was amazing. So this, I got to show you, this is what, this is one of our good friends, one of our best friends down here, um, Joel and Danielle. This is their neighbor right next door to them. The guy's boat wound up in his own pool. <laughs> it floated up and went in his own pool. Like, and how do you get that there out? Are all kinds of, all kinds of stories though. We had, we had other friends who lost their boats all together, just washed out to sea and yeah. or they found it. I guess they, they did found it. They found it in somebody else's yard. Yes. Kind of very similar. The, yeah, the boat yeah, yeah. rider on, in our little uh, cove, there yeah. was a boat standing straight Dan, up. Dan I and mean, Angela, right? They, lo- they, they lost that, but yeah. They, crazy yeah. damage. But there, there was just debris everywhere. I mean, the amount of damage that Helene did with, you know, we had piles and piles of just debris in our yard. Um, yeah, there was there was another uh, picture that we we have here of a, a car, an SUV that is like wedged between the end of a dock. Yeah, I mean, it just the most out there random and stuff. A dock. It's yeah. so weird, like the stuff that we were seeing and finding, just how much debris and like we had piles and piles of what looked like like mulch 
like stuck in our gate and stuck yeah. at the end of our, like by the seawall and the, and the We mangroves should talk about and, the businesses because all the businesses on Gulf Boulevard, you know, 99% of them are, ground level. are shut down. They're just, right now they're still shut down yeah. or four weeks later. They're trying to get reopened, but they're very limited and, and they, they don't have anything. But just here, here's us kind of driving down Gulf Boulevard just to kind of show the destruction. This is a few days after because all that sand was in the street. Right. And so they wouldn't let people on. We we're on a barrier island. They wouldn't let people on for a couple of days. Yeah. And mind you, we couldn't go anywhere because we didn't have a car. Right. We had, we had no car. But this is people started to clear out stuff from there. This is a few days later. They started to clear out their first levels and all this junk was still there. And it was it, it and all the restaurants like these the glass was broken in because the water came in. You know, John, who owns Sweet Sage and My mm-hmm. Happy Place, they're, they're near us. Uh, he he's lived there since the 50s. Never happened. I remember one, not, about a year ago, the reason that some people had such a comfort, comfort level and did not leave is because there's people like John who said, I've been here since the 50s. We've never been hit. Yep. I believe in that blessing probably. It just whatever reason, we never get hit. Yep. And so it's like he's been there since the 50s. So he, he's in the 70s. He, had a, he has a very 70s or 80s, but he has a, he has a very comf- a high comfort level. Because I remember saying before, I go, this last year, Ian, you didn't get water in your place? And Ian, he goes, no, never do. My properties never get wet. We well, can't say that anymore. Yeah. And he was a great guy. We were able to kind of help him with some, you know, getting his phone charged and stuff. Yeah. But just a lot of people were defeated. So anyway, now we're exhausted. We're exhausted. We are, everything we're, we're stinks. We're cleaning up. We're helping our neighbors clean up you and get their houses. You can't find gas and-, and food is, now you go across the bridge, it was like life is normal. Right. Everybody was fine across the barrier island back on the mainland. Right. It, where, it was like they didn't even know it happened. No. Where we are, it's a complete and total war zone. Like have, National Guard's there, everything. You have yeah. to show your permit. To, you have a special permit when you live on the beach to be able to come back over that bridge to get there. Because they don't want looters. And all of a sudden, we're about four or five days in, and we start getting notice of another hurricane coming up through. We went through Helene. Now they got Milton. Milton, what a great hurricane. We, we, we heard that was coming. And this time, it was going to be double the surge. Yep. Double the surge. And it was headed right toward us. Right towards us. And we, we all looked and said, you've got to be kidding me. We we're exhausted. All of our stuff are in the street. That's not, not us, but a lot of people. And the, we, we had, we had cars in the driveway. Our cars in the driveway. Well, two of them, cause my car wouldn't come out, but the, and we should talk about that too. Like it was, it was really sobering to have the tow trucks come and like take our cars away. Yeah. And- but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta interrupt you to tell you this. So what? Our people, our neighbors lost everything. So I, I looked at that and thought, whatever, like so many people lost so much more than us. Like people, even, I, people online are going, I can't believe you're crying about your car. I'm like, I'm not, I'm just telling you what happened to me and my story, but I feel so much so worse. I a hundred percent agree felt, with you. We felt grateful the next day that I, we, I, nothing yes, a hundred percent. We felt grateful. And, and I felt the need, the strong need to go and help my neighbors even before we cleaned up our own house. But, yeah. um, it was a little sad because yes. the convertible that you bought me, I was um, yep. in the hospital cruise. I had just given birth to cruise and he was three months early yep. and he was in the NICU and, and yep. I came home one day and for our anniversary, you had surprised me with that little car. So there was a sentimental value. It wasn't just a car. Yeah. There was a sentimental value to it that, that made it hard was, to wash away. <laughs> that was all but three inches underwater. <laughs> but, but, it, but it made it hard to, to watch it drive away. Yeah. That, that's all I'm saying. Yes. Cars are replaceable. <laughs> yeah. Who, you know, yeah. people lost their homes. I 100% agree with you. So let's move on. So we got, so, we, so all this stuff's happening. We're exhausted. We're mentally exhausted. We're tired. And now we make the decision, are we going to have to evacuate? Yeah. So let's see what happens. We'll decide if we're going to evacuate. And this is going to be double. And all of our neighbors, including the ones that never leave, I said, yeah. we're out of here. Yeah. And we said, we are out of here too. So we went to Orlando. So because the saying is run from water, hide from wind. And, well, and- we, we didn't run from water. Well, the first time, the first time we didn't because we didn't know water was going to hit yeah. us like that. Yeah. Um, but that, but that's what the the news always says is run from water, hide from wind. Yeah. So being that the surge was supposed to be that high. Yeah. Yes. It's time to get out of Dodge. Because, because we realize we're like, okay, well, that's going to, it's going to come up there. It's going to be double. So that's going to go on our first level. So we did everything we could to put everything up on beds. Yeah. We put everything up. We could, everything that was valuable. We took with us. We, you know, when well, you, when you leave, not you, everything that was valuable. Well, but. no, no. But when you leave, you have to take things like your passports and your ID and your titles and your insurance policies and all that important paperwork you have to take with you because yeah. if your house gets demolished in a hurricane, you'd lose all that. Right. You just start. That's just more headache you have to deal with. So we had to put all that, pack it up, put it in the car. Then we had to figure out how to take a dog who's a husky. He was a fifty-pound husky. 
along with the stuff we have. And and we bought one car in between. Oh, yes. We should say that. Between we, Helene we bought and Milton. a car. There's hardly any left. We went out and bought a used car. So we had yep. a car. We had a car so we could at least, at least our neighbors, thank God, gave us a car for a couple of days so we can go buy a car. And we did that. So we had a car. So now we pack up the car. We have two cats. We love our cats. But you're really limited on space and what you you're have in the car, too. Limited. You know, there's you and I. There's our two kids. There's the dog. And, and, you know, you have we one bag, food. we, we brought, brought food because when you're evacuating, you don't know if there's going to be food where you're going. And right. being that this was the kind of hurricane that it was, there were a lot of people evacuating and going to the same place. Yeah. So you don't know if there's going to be a shortage of food there. So you do have yeah. to bring a cooler full of food. And we each had a bag with three or four outfits. Right. And that's it. Like we barely had the clothes on our back. And the car was packed. The, the car was the packed to capacity. Because Max needs half of the back. Half Max, of the trunk. Yeah. He's the half the trunk or the. Whatever you the call SUV it, the back of the SUV. Yeah. So he needs half of that for himself. So we looked and said, what about the cats? And we said, okay, the water, the water, if it gets up, it'll be the first level. We have a second level of our house that's above the garage. That's where the kids' bedrooms are. Yep. It's a decent size area, a thousand square feet. And it's, it's, we have a, we have a generator, so it should be okay for a while. And we said, let's leave the cat because cats are outdoor cats. Yeah. So we said, let's leave the cats because we, we've done that before Yeah. because they, they are outdoor cats. They are not hotel cats. They're, They're resourceful, not, they, yeah. And they don't like being in cars and they yeah. hate it. So we said, okay. And we were concerned if we took them with us, they might escape out of the hotel room and we'd never right. see them again. Right. So there's a lot of decisions there. So we, we felt like we it was safer to leave them at home. Put a ton of water, a ton of food. Everything was all set. We had them all good. We had their beds all made and we left. And then. On the way to well, evacuate. Well, let's talk about how long it was. Normally, and by the way, you said, go get gas. And yeah. I was like, you think? And the night before I told you to go get gas. This is Sunday night. Yeah. And the storm was going to hit us on Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Turns out it hit us Thursday, early morning, Thursday, like, you know, or late night, Wednesday or Thursday morning, yep. one o'clock. But you said, go get gas. I said, you think? He kind of rolled his eyes at me like. But I went to get gas and yeah. there was already a line. Yeah. Already a line on Sunday night to get gas. Took me about a half an hour to get gas in the car. I filled up. Thank God. Because the next day, I think people were starting to run out of gas. Yeah. It was nuts. And so that we left on. And I said, let's leave on Monday instead of Tuesday or Wednesday. To beat the traffic. We didn't. Everybody was leaving. Yeah. So it took it took us, including dinner, six hours. So yeah. We stopped for dinner for an hour. So five hours of travel time to, to go from um, St. Pete to Orlando. Right. And normally that's about an hour and a half to two hour drive. Right. If there's not a lot of traffic. And so that was crazy all by itself. And you and I were about an hour away. It's midnight about. I looked yep. at you and you heard the news and said. Well, we're about halfway there and they 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 increased the surge warning. Yeah, it, it to, when at first it was supposed to be what, like, I forget now, six to eight feet something or like that. something like that. And then they increased it to 10 to 12. And we're like, OK, 10 to 12. If it hits on top of high tide, that's <laughs> up to up to 15 feet. Our first floor is going to be underwater. It was going to okay. be a lot of water. And yes. so we decided about an hour out. I said, I am not feeling right about those cats. Yeah. All of a sudden, my heart sank. I said, and I at that am point, not, we felt like they might not be safe anymore. I said, this is not going to be right. If they get water, at first we said, well, they'll get in the bed. I'm like, I don't want them to be terrified in the bed with water in the room. And you said, what do you want to do? Go back. I said, I do. So we dropped so you, you off. So you dropped us off, the kids and I and the dog off. And then you went back. I drove back. We got there at like 1.30. I slept for two hours. I put them in their carriers, which are older carriers. We don't take them just when we, when we flew them here. Yeah. Um, they were not happy with me at all. I did have some stuff to help them take the edge off. I got and our, our cats I, have claws. They have they they have uh, they are called uh, they have a dual claw. Is that what it's called? They 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 have an extra thumb. Yeah. So they have two. They have lots of big nails and they're used to fighting. So I put them in the car. Our girl cat Zena, the one we had saved the storm before, ripped out of her zipper right away. She ripped the thumb. I'm like, oh, you son of a gun. So she so I said, well, you're in the car with me now, guys. Let's go. And I put your litter box in there and we took off. And consequently, she ended up peeing in the brand new car that I've got. Great. That was lovely. So I got cat piss in the car and she was meowing the whole way, crawling all over me. Finally, they, kept, they settled down. And I brought them back. So now we're now we're staying in this two bedroom, two bath condo. It was, it was a nice place. It was a nice we place at. to stay. Yeah. Um, it was a secure place for a storm. They had yep. their own generator system and all that stuff. And we were there for the storm. And then... Which the storm did go through Orlando as well. It had it had decreased in intensity, but many of our friends were there with us. Yep, we brought so a lot of a lot of our daughters and sons' friends were there with us. So we were yeah. all kind of staying in the hotel together, Being supportive of one another. But the level of stress that you and I had during that trip was, again, like I, I was 
in my life, I think my divorce and then our son being born three months early, those are definitely two really high stress times. Yeah. This one ranked up there as well. Like It was like, so prolonged, too. Not, it went from one hurricane to the now we're evacuating, and we sat there thinking we're going to lose everything. Well, and as we're watching the news, you know, there's there's like, it's an emotional roller coaster because it's like, okay, it's headed right toward Tampa. Oh, but now it bumped a little north. Oh, but now it's right back to Tampa. Oh, now it's going south. Oh, now it's right back to Tampa. Like, like it, you use the expression, it's like being stalked by an angry turtle. So it just slow because you coming. never know, you never know exactly where it's going to hit. And I was a little nervous because like when Ian, I think it was Ian, Ian hit Fort Myers, that was supposed to be a direct hit to Tampa. And right. the thing that kind of freaked me out about that storm was not only were, were the weather predictions wrong about the location because it hit two hours south of us, they were also really wrong about the intensity. And it was supposed to hit as a cat three and it was only two miles an hour away from a cat five. And right. that's really what made me think a little more clearly about evacuating, especially being that we have kids, because I'm, you know, you and I are pretty tough. We're adventure seekers. Like I could totally see us saying, let's stay and let's ride out a storm. We'll be fine, but not with kids. And, and being that they're unpredictable. And I got to see that firsthand with that storm. I didn't want to take any chances, but, yeah. but the level of stress we had during that storm of not knowing if we were going to have a roof over our head when we went back after the storm, that was terrifying. You know, our, our entire the, lifestyle. I remember watching the storm and they said, okay, if it hits, if it's a direct hit, we're going to get the surge. And if you are north, if it goes south and you're north of it, it'll, it should take the water out. But if you're, but if it goes up a little bit, it's yes. going to fill us up. We're going to have an enormous surge. You don't want to be on the right side of a hurricane. The right side of a hurricane. Yeah. Right. And so you want to be on the left side of the hurricane. Right. And so we, that night. All of us, I remember being at the bar. My friends were there. I went down, I was using the treadmill to get some steps and I was just trying to keep my sanity. And I, uh, I stopped and somebody said, how are we doing guys? We, because we had no internet, we had no optics on our right. house. We couldn't see what the storm was like and nobody was stayed behind. So there was no pictures to show because there was no neighbors yeah, to no stay neighbors behind. no neighbors to contact because everybody left. So we didn't know if the water was coming in, going out, whatever was going to happen. And, and we should back up a little bit too. Nobody left for Helene that we know of. Like no right. one on our street, nobody in the neighborhoods, nobody even put their cars on higher ground. We weren't the only stupid ones that left, left them in our garage. Yeah. Like it just, it took everybody by surprise. This one, everyone's gone. Yes. So now my friends, uh, Joel, thank God, he's got a friend who's got these satellite cameras that are made for hunting. So he actually has, he has optics. He can see the canal that he lives on. So they live on a canal and they can see the water. And I'll never forget him saying, Glenn, Glenn, look at this. Water's going out. I go, are you sure? He goes, look, it's going out. I'm like, water's going out. And then we all said, is it coming back like a typhoon? Is it coming back bigger? And we all said. And when's high tide? <laughs> yeah. And we're like, I don't know. I don't know. And so we were all scared and nervous about that. We kind of had to go to bed for that. But, but before that. We start getting phone calls. So our social media is blowing up. We get millions and millions of views. We're having, we're gaining tens of thousands of followers by the day. It's, it's insane how we're growing on social media. It's just, everybody's. So when we left though, when we left for, Hel when we left for Milton, the cleanup for Helene hadn't been completed. So, right. so what I was going to say was all of people's furnishings, their beds, their mattresses, everything in their house, sheet cabinets, rock, cabinets, sheet rock. is appliances is all piled up on the curb in front of their houses. And we're not talking a few houses. We're talking Every all house. the way down the street. Every because house. even even if your whole house didn't get ruined, your stuff in your garage did. Yep. So there were piles in front of every house. So that was the other big concern. P pile, piles being mountains. Mountains, not yes. not piles. Like you're talking about piles that were, you know, 20, 30 feet long and 10 feet high. No, imagine the entire contents of your house being by the curb. Right. And People's the sheet rock clothes, and the, yeah. like everything. Yeah. And so that was the big concern. Whereas Helene was a water storm, you know, that was it was the surge. Milton was a water and wind storm. Right. So we were worried about, you know, all those, all those things becoming like projectile missiles right. in the wind. Right. And so we did board up the house. Our contractor came over and helped us board up the house and, and all of that. So the destruction that Helene did just got, yeah. you know. So, so back to the, back to the day before we get picked up by a national news organization. I can't think what the name of it is. It's the equivalent of NBC in Canada. It's a nationwide news. It's just like an NBC. And they said, we have seen your story. We want to interview. So we got on Zoom and did an interview. That led to like two or three more TV interviews the next morning. I, you, you slept in for a couple of them. I did a, couple, a radio um, interview. 
Then our local upstate New York, where we're from, about four of those stations, Spectrum, uh, CBS, NBC, uh, I feel like there was one more, um, picked us up and did interviews with us also. Mm -hmm. We were like all over the mainstream media, all over the social media, giving our story about what was going to happen. Because at the, at the time, we did, when they for interviewed us, we didn't know. And they, they actually had us come on the next day for a follow-up interview after the storm. Right. Because as it happens, at the last minute, within the last hour, that sucker, that it storm turned. turned just like it always has with the Indian blessing, it turned. And it turned to the right. And I always feel so bad for the people that are south. They have like uh, survivor's guilt. Yeah, it wasn't even like we were praying for it to go south. You know, we had just experienced well, Helene. <laughs> well, we, we had just experienced Helene. So we didn't want anybody else to go through that same thing. Well, no, but, but you, don't, but want, you, you also, don't want to go through it. Yes, you do have this self-preservation yeah. feeling. But but like their prayers were just let it dissipate, you know, like like yeah. <laughs> don't don't do harm to anybody. Hit the ground and it literally sucked all the water out and we were OK. I went back the next night because I decided to bring the because the cats were going stir crazy in the room. And I think it was the next night. It was just, yeah. this, this is Thursday. This happened Thursday morning, early morning. I went back Friday night um, and I drove back and there was more debris. We had a huge mattress in our yard, in our driveway. That was about 300 pounds. It was soaked with water. Yeah. I talked to the, the police down there and, you know, I was able to bring my cats back and the dog back. Um, we knew that our, we have a, a, um, a awesome, call like a family member, but we have a house manager that comes and helps maintain things at the house and stuff. And she was able to come over and, you know, watch the dog and make sure the cats were fed while we were gone for a few more days. And it was, it was, uh, cause we had to figure out how to get everybody home. Right. I had made two trips to get everybody there. So that was the first trip. So there wasn't enough room in the car to no. get us all home together. No. So we brought them back and, you know, we saw the destruction still. Thankfully things didn't get blown around like projectiles because it was so wet. It was heavy. Yeah. Yeah. It got heavy because of the sheetrock on top of everything. So it didn't go like projectiles, but there were, you know, still a lot of debris and a lot of people's signs are down. Yeah. Like billboards ripped. Like trees, trees oh, uprooted, everybody's. branches everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing that was really surprising with Milton, too, was the number of tornadoes that that spawned Did up. Did you like, see the one in Treasure Island that ripped the top off yeah. the condos? Yeah. Did you see the one that ripped through the solar panels? Did you see that picture? No. It was crazy. It was like this whole field so full of solar panels. And there was just like this diagonal line that went through them where the tornado just like ripped through them. Yeah, that that part was that part was scary. Those people had no idea that was coming. Our house manager, her next door neighbor's roof was ripped off, just completely off. Like yeah. the, the I, I, I don't remember the number. I want to say it's like in the 40s, but there were so many tornadoes that were churned up from this storm. It, it like broke some record. Well, that that part made it crazy, it made it insane, and it was it was very difficult. What was we, interesting too is with this storm and how large the cone was, you didn't know where to evacuate. Like mm -hmm. you could either go really, really far south, but there's a chance it could turn and mm -hmm. go that way. You could go to like Fort Lauderdale or Miami, or you could go, you know, up north. But if you if you waited too long, there were no hotel rooms yeah. available. I mean, we sat in the patio of that of that hotel and I said, What happens if we lose everything? If we, if we literally can't go back to our home, what are we going to do? Because there's no housing. Right. Because all the people that lost their homes during Helene are now using the temporary housing or like the extended stay oh, places yeah, or the Airbnbs. And yeah. yeah. Or two the, weeks or whatever the, it was. These a hurricanes hit yeah. within two weeks of each other. Yes. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Within Crazy. Two weeks. Um, so yeah, we were like, where are we going to go? You know, in, in New York, we have lots of rental properties. We have some Airbnbs, you know, we could have figured, we figured out. it out. But here... We don't have those kind of connections. We don't have those connections. We, I'm, part of a, I'm part of a mastermind called Collective Genius. It's a, it's a fantastic group of people that are there. And, and some people reached out to me and said, I've got properties you can stay in for 30 days while we're closing. And they were so generous. I was like, I, was like, I hope I don't have to take you up on this. Yeah. But we were having conversations. We have an office down the street from us. It's a little 10 by 10 room. We're like, it's very small. are we going to have to stay there? Like, and and no I'm shower. like, I'm like, where are we going to shower? And you go, well, we can go shower at the gym. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is going to be convenient. But, but, but we were, we're both, trying to figure we were it out. Both, we had both settled ourselves to the fact that this, we were going to lose our house. Yeah. We we're going to lose our home because we were, we just said, what if? Because it's yeah. easy to say, well, let's just deal with it when we have to deal with it. But we should try and get ahead of this. Yeah. We should be thinking about what our next, because everyone's making the same moves. Right. So we have to figure out how do we get ahead of everybody else? Well, the perfect example was when we went to go buy a car that next week. So I had looked the day after the hurricane. I was assuming our cars were totaled. The first so hurricane. I was looking on Carvana because we needed to have a car delivered. We couldn't go pick one up because we didn't have a way to get there. And Uber wasn't going to be able to get down Gulf no. Boulevard. Um, so anyway, I, I looked. There were a whole bunch of the cars I was looking at, 
whole bunch of them. I looked the next day, pending, 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 pending yeah. in the sales process because everybody thousands else lost their cars, cars too. Lost. Yeah, thousands of and cars so, lost. And so, so I was thinking the same thing with housing. I'm like, yeah. you know, do we start looking right now while we're still evacuated? You know, like it was, it was terrifying. We had, we had to take lots of deep breaths that trip. Yeah. I, I, I'm sort of laughing is when our, when it took, it took about a week and a half before they came and took maybe two weeks before they came and took our cars away. Yeah, it was a while. And this guy comes up, doesn't speak hardly any English at all. And it was really broken English. And he says, oh, for cars. I'm like, uh, yeah, he takes the cars away. And I don't hear from my insurance company for two weeks. I remember saying, was that just some guy who stole my cars or was that? <laughs> <laughs> turns out he was from the insurance company but when they called they said yeah we get that question a lot so that was funny but i tell you it, it was the, it was a it was a crazy experience i think that if we were not real estate investors and didn't have a business that ran in a different location i don't know how people survive because it, it was a you know the insurance isn't going to cover it yeah we had about a fifty thousand dollar hit between a lot of weird things the cars were hit so we had to deal, deal getting new cars we have insurance for the cars but the home, our, our deductible for flood insurance is 10 grand and it's not worth the, the headache. A lot of stuff wouldn't be covered yeah. because of the way it is. And so it just, it was, it was a lot. And I think that, I don't know if we weren't business owners, I don't know how we would have done but it. It's still out of pocket money. Like we had to hire a contractor to, yeah. to, you know, rip the sheet rock out and clean all the, clean all the literal shit water yeah. underneath our house. Cause that was disgusting. It was starting to smell two days later. We're like, what does that smell? It well, because all under, under our, our house, there's a, there's a crawl space. six foot crawl space with a vapor barrier. And that yeah. was covered in sludge, which we didn't really talk about. So when, when the water receded from Helene, it left this sludgy muck on everything. everything. It was slippery. You, you almost fell like three times. S several times. Um, it just, it was disgusting and it was filled with sewer water. So it smelled awful. And, and so that, that vapor barrier was under our house. And so that all had to be cut out or else um, mold would have started growing on our floor joist. And so, you know, all those things like added up, we had to have all that sheetrock ripped out of the garage and, and the mudroom and the cleanup yeah. and your area is inundated with contractors too. They're passing their car on a Home oh, yeah. Depot, and that's how we got the guy to come clean out underneath. Yeah, Judge I had to pay it. three three grand to clean out three two grand other to clean that out. two other hatches that we have in the house that yeah. were concrete. Yeah, right now our pool is nasty. Our pool's got our all pool that still nasty, looks like a swamp. It does got all that nasty water. There's, it's probably in its own ecosystem. There's yeah. probably fish in there and everything else probably. in the pool. Can't see it. But we're gonna tackle that this weekend so we yeah. get it cleaned out. But it was it's been crazy. You know, I'm concerned for all the. There's a lot of business owners down here that have lost their business. Yeah. And I feel bad for him because I've been a business owner about 30 years. You've been a business well, owner. Well, even even the the guy uh, where our office is, he owns a lot of different properties. He lost seven, I think 14 or 17 businesses. He had no flood insurance or anything. And he, he lost, yeah, in our, where our office is, there's got to be, I don't know, 100 units. Mm -hmm. He probably, he had to have lost 75 units there. Yeah. I mean, he had to have because he had to take all those mattresses out. I remember yeah, he was half there. Of them are on the ground floor. He came and sat in my office for a while. I never really met him, but he came and sat in the office and sat down. And he looked tired. Yeah. He sat and talked to us and and had, and he's been a real estate investor his whole life, but he's in, he's investing in a call it a high risk area. He yeah. said, I never been hit in 30 years. He said, I haven't paid for flood insurance for 30 years. I said, You're gonna pay for it now. He goes, Oh yeah. And now what's happening in the real estate market here is that people are trying to just sell their houses for the land now. Right. They don't want to, there, there's a law with FEMA, we think, I don't have a law, but a- It's a regulation. Regulation yeah. that, go ahead, you can describe that regulation. So so you can only do repairs up to 50% of what your structure is worth. Now that's structure only, not including the land. So let's say your land is worth a million dollars, but the actual house on it is only worth like 350,000. You can only do renovations, what's that? $175,000 worth. Yeah. So if you, if you- are going to go over that 175,000 if your renovations are going to be more you than that, that then you have to I actually just saw this on Nextdoor this morning there was a meeting in St. Pete um you can either build up so you can do a second story and and basically make the main level of your home just the garage the garage so you can either build up or you have to tear down and start from scratch and build it current Which, codes. Let's be honest, that that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. You're talking about millions of dollars yeah. to, to build a so new home. A lot of these homes, especially the single family that are that are on ground level, they either, you know, a lot of them have lived there forever, so they right. may not even have house payments anymore, and they, they're they're they not in a position. The house. Yeah. Right, but they're not in a position to buy or to build a new million dollar home financially, or or you know that people are just like our next door neighbor self-insured as well. They didn't have insurance. They bought the house for a million dollars thinking the land is worth that. 
but they just lost everything. Yeah. So they, they figure, well, we'll just sell the land. But the problem with that is after a big hit like this, is the land still worth that much money? Right. And how much longer will it take to recover? It's going to take some time. I think people, people, because people don't want to buy here now necessarily. Now investors do, but it's, this is not coming down. You, you can, you you have to be a builder. But these this aren't flip like a, houses. These aren't flip houses. These aren't flip houses because that still yeah. falls under the 50% rule for FEMA. Right. Like you can't just go in and slap some sheetrock right. and, and, you know, repair it. And so the other problem is too, if, if someone has to do that, if they, if FEMA says you have to, you have to make your house better or whatever. If I don't know how that works when you're homesteaded. If you have to build a new structure, I bet the homestead, so that you don't have to pay the high taxes, right. I bet you that goes away. If you have to build a brand new structure, once you tear that structure down, so now people that were paying, let's say they're paying six grand a year for taxes, now they have to pay 30 if yeah. they have to build a new house. Right. And how do you, you know, I guess, I guess what I say all that because, you know, not, we, we've gotten ourselves to a position as real estate investors that we have assets, right? We've owned, we own dozens of rental properties that have, you know, millions of dollars in equity. We have two uh, very successful businesses that run, you know, one, one with some of my involvement, the flipping business uh, in New York doesn't, doesn't require a lot of my involvement. You know, we have a great team that up there that works. You, you stepped out a year or two ago and, yep. and I do, I have meetings with my leaders. I have an amazing team. But if we don't have that business, what happens? I mean, we don't, if we don't have income that comes in, can you imagine the stress level that people have right now? If they're, yeah. if they're down here and they've lost their jobs and they lost their home now, I don't know right. who has lost their jobs, but the, the, the business owners that are oh. on the beach, I feel horrible for them. Well, and all their employees, all their employees lost their job. I've seen a bunch of people posting on Facebook and next door that, you know, crappy bills is, it's down for the count. So I, I have no job right now. So yeah. they're trying to do like odds and ends stuff. So they, no, they probably they're, employ 50 people. Yeah. There's a lot of people that's that, just one restaurant. that lost jobs. And so right now I, I, you know, I, I, you know, all I can tell you is everybody, if you're listening to this, find a way, obviously we believe in real estate. I mean, that's, that's what we believe in. because that's what we've been doing for years. And that's what we teach now is how do you get yourself to a position? And I'm not saying don't go out and be a real estate investor just to say I flip houses. Do it to get yourself financially secure. So if, so if life kicks you down and knocks your teeth in, you're not going to be down and out. You know, I just thought about this just now too. What a relief it was that we didn't have like nine to five jobs that we had to evacuate from. Imagine because that. we would have lost that. That was We had enough stress going on at that time anyway to add a loss of income because we weren't at our nine to five jobs. Yeah. Would have just been another stress. Financially, so, yeah. Well, we were in Orlando. You're right. We kept extending our stay because we're like, well, it's a mess down there. It stinks. We have no power. We have no internet. So let's just stay here in Orlando. Yeah. If you have a job, a lot of times your employer is probably saying, "All right, I know you got a hurricane, yeah, buddy, TikTok, but we got, get back. we got we got stuff to do, or you get your vacation time up." You're right. We had that. We had the luxury to do that. Right. We actually went to an amusement park one day because my my. 20 year old daughter, daughter flew in, 19 yeah. year old flew. We had that, we had that trip planned months ago, months ago. And she happened to fly into the same town we're in. I'm like, honey, let's just stay an extra day. And let's yep. just, and we, we were able to take a, a minute with our family and you know, that wasn't cheap. We turned an evacuation into a hurricane. We did. And, but, and I'm not, I, I want this to come off the right way. It's not, I'm not bragging. It's just because what, what we have built allowed us to literally no pun intended, weather the storm. Mm -hmm of the storm and not have to worry as much as other people have to worry about losing everything. Yeah, Cause our business continued It did. like our business in New York, our, our real estate investing company, like it was business as usual up there. Right. All our people were working. They were still doing deals. Like yep. we didn't have to worry about that. Our paycheck still came in yep. and we had minimum and they, they knew I couldn't work for a while, but I, I, I would just tell you anybody who's listening to this, if you've not found a way to get yourself financially secure Listen, if you don't like real estate, don't do real estate, but find some way to get yourself secure. I think real estate is the easiest way for average people to build wealth yes, I, without agreed. question, without, without any question. That's the easiest way for the average people to do that. If you can find a way to build up, number one, an income, we believe in rental income coming in, or have a business that operates without your daily involvement. And again, it starts with your involvement. It doesn't just start that way, but it build up a business. That's what we teach all the time. And that's what, you know, all these, all these, I call them the new rules, these young guys that are online now, I call them the bros. So there's all these bros that have their hat on there. You know, they, they, they're all out there trying to teach stuff because they flipped their, they flipped their dad's house three years ago. Now they're a professional. What they're teaching is how to make 
income from flipping houses or wholesaling. That's what you see online all the time is how to make income. That is not what you need. If you want to be financially secure, you have to have assets. You have to own property. You have to own assets that pay you money. And if you do that like we've done, then you can actually have real true wealth so that you can weather the storms of life. Because whether it's a hurricane, whether it's health, whether it's the death of a loved one, whether it's a sick family member that has to go in the hospital, or you, you something happens to you that you can't work anymore, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have that? I think that this whole experience for me drove that point home like it did when Cruz was in the hospital, that we had that same experience 10 years ago. It wasn't as much as it is now, but now it's like as tough as this was. As stressful as it was, we have a lot to be grateful for and, and be yes. proud of, honestly. Like we, we built that. We did. We built that and it started with one house. Like we didn't, it was, we weren't like overnight successes. It took hard work, but it was worth it. I don't think, I don't know if you saw the one, one night. I don't normally do, I, I, I do like to respond to social media posts if I, if I have the chance to. And one night we were in the hotel room and I saw a post come up that said, oh, talk about privilege. This guy and his hundred thousand dollar cars. First off, they were 10 year old cars all paid off, whatever. And I, I lit into him about privilege. I said, privilege. I have been bankrupt. I've lost everything. I said, I even lost houses in foreclosure 30 years ago. I said, I have been, I have been grinding and scraping and building and failing more than most people ever fail to build what I built. And for you to come out here and say, I'm privileged, this shows a lot about you and who you are. I said, and, and if, there were hundreds of comments of people saying, he worked for it. You didn't work for it. Yeah. Don't give him crap. And I was so thankful for all you guys who jumped in and defended me because I thought to myself, how can you call me privileged? I've worked my ass No family off. money, never went to college. No, yeah. <laughs> no college degree, none of that. And being able to build what we've built. So, you know, I was, uh, I was very honored we, that a lot of people jumped in. It. We did, but I would just encourage people as we wrap up this episode that find a way to have assets so that, you know, we're probably going to sell a couple of our assets now to have some cash to pay for some of this stuff going on now, but we're, we're going to, we're going to do that. At least we have them to do it. At least we have them to do it. Yeah. Or we have those income properties. We can do that and pull some, we can pull some, a quick few hundred grand in if we need to. And, you know, I, if you find assets that will pay you when you're sleeping, you'll never have to worry about money again when life knocks you down. And that's all I, that's how I'd like to end the episode is just whether you follow us or whether you find something else you want to do. Number one, make sure it's real. Make sure it's true. We live in a world of a bunch of people that are just so dishonest. It's hard to, it's social media is made. So anybody with a phone is a coach and knows what they're doing. And everybody's done a thousand deals like us, you know, so we don't have that experience, but find, find something that gets you finished secure. I think real estate is the absolute best vehicle. If you want to follow us, follow us. We're Glenn and Amber Schwarm, and this was the Fearless Future podcast. And after surviving two hurricanes, we are glad to be back online.